Why is a full length sizer die so important in 40 Smith & Wesson? Well, 40 Smith & Wessons are notorious for creating what they call case bulge. 40s are shot with such high pressures in this round that the cases themselves, after being shot, it actually bulges the case casings. Glocks more than others, and this is no knock on Glock. It's because Glock doesn't have a fully supported chamber, or any firearm that doesn't have a fully supported chamber will bulge a case, the casings in 40 Smith & Wesson, more so than ones that do have a full uh, supported chamber. What I mean by supported chamber is, I'm going to try to demonstrate with my M&P barrel. If you notice on this, when I put this case, this casing in there, there's no part of the casing showing on the front of the chamber. It's basically just that outer lip. Okay, that's fully supported. The whole the whole round is resting on the inside of this chamber here, where Glocks and other some other guns that don't have a fully supported chamber and I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit so you can see it the round will actually stick out that much so only part of the casing or the round itself is supported so as the pressure builds and the bullet goes down the barrel it puts a lot of strain on the bottom of this on the bottom of this casing so you need a full size full length sizer die in your press or if you don't have one uh, Lee also makes a product it's called it's called the uh, bulge buster and you put it in a single stage press or a progressive it doesn't really matter and you basically just run the casing up in there and that takes out that bulge like a full uh, full length sizer die would so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate why really why you need one this is a case gauge. It's just like the the chamber of your gun. If you notice, this fired round here, before I size it, won't fit into the check gauge. This is a piece of uh, brass shot from a Glock. And I'll give you another hint, another tip. If you're picking up range, uh, range brass and you want to be extra careful with Glocks, because like I said, they have a tendency of bulging them even more than some other guns. Easy way to tell if it's Glock brass. I'm going to try to give you a close up of this. The firing pin has a unique uh, thing to it. It actually, when it dimples the primer, it actually puts this little rectangular thing around the dimple where most guns, like my M&P, it's basically just a dimple. And again, I'll give you uh, some close up still photos of that so you can see the difference. So that's a good way to tell if, if it's a piece of uh, Glock brass. So basically that won't fit into that that check gauge. Now I have a piece of brass that I went ahead and I sized it in in the die and that'll slip right in there. It falls right in. And I know that'll chamber in my gun. Because the inside diameter of this mimics the chamber of a 40 Smith & Wesson. If you don't want to get this tool or you want to be even more careful and more exact use the barrel of your gun use the chamber from your gun I recommend you take this out of your gun do it like I'm doing it's a lot safer that way and a lot easier to put this these these in so again if I use the chamber of my gun it slips right in I know this round will chamber in my gun now 